welcome, welcome, welcome to segment number one. Definitely hope that you have your Bible. Pull it out and let's get ready to get into the lesson for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come to your presence. Father, we just thank you for allowing us this opportunity to fellowship once again, to get deeper and deeper into your words and to search out your scriptures. Lord, I thank you for this fellowship. I thank you for the listener. Thank you for this podcast. I just thank you for allowing us, Lord, and giving us the ability to do. I thank you, God, because without you, there would be no way of doing it. And without you, there would be no knowledge of how to do it. And without you, would not have the ability to do. And I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We pray that this podcast fall upon fertile ground, Lord. Inspires people to want to get deeper and deeper into your scriptures and search it out for themselves. Lord, I pray for this listener right now that you touch them in a mighty way. If there is anything coming up against them, if there's any obstacle, any stumbling block, any situation that they're now dealing with, Lord, I know you are more than able to remove it. You know every situation. You know everything that's going on. You know every heartache, every breakup, every foul thing, every illness, every sickness, every disease, every issue, everything that is rocking the boat or disturbing our peace. Lord, you know it, you know it, you know it. And you are more than capable of removing it. And because of you, all things are possible. We thank you for your long suffering and your kindness and your tender mercies. We give you glory and honor, Lord, and we salute you, we praise you, and we magnify your holy name. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in again and joining me with segment number one, and this is show number 30, and I hope you have your Bible because we're getting ready to get into the Word of the Lord, and we're going into the Old Testament. I bet you guessed that, didn't you? Because it seems like I stay in the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament because it is filled with a lot of different stories. It's filled with a lot of things that are relevant to today and gives us a lot of messages in all kinds of ways. And the more you read in the book, the more you get into the Bible, the more you will find out exactly what I'm telling you. You'll discover it for yourselves. Because the Bible has much to share with us, and it wants us to search it out. It's easy to write things so you can just open it up and go right to it. But sometimes you need to search things out, and the more you search something out, the longer it will stick with you. It'll seep into you because you had to look for it. It just wasn't, bam, it was there. You had to search it out. And once you searched it out and you went looking here and you went thinking about it and you were searching this reference and looking at that and thinking about this and pondering that, and you didn't realize it, but it was sinking deeper and deeper into you. And you were realized that a point when you got ready to say something, that scripture or that thought or that message would come forth in you and you didn't realize that it had sunk into you like that. But that's how it happens when you search things out. That's why they have you write essay papers and they have you do research and they have you do a lot of different things. Because if you search something out, if you have to go looking for it, if you have to dig for it, and if you're persistent at doing it, then you're going to grab a hold of that. And for some reason, it's going to stay with you longer. It's going to sink into your into your inner core. And that text is about. It's about sinking into you. It's got to get into your inner man. So you have to do more than just read it, glance over the words and read the surface. But you have to let the verses and the, the language and everything seep into you to get a real feel and knowledge of what it is and how it is that God is speaking. So we're in the Old Testament. And we're going into chapter 16 in 2 Samuel. So that's 2 Samuel, chapter 16, Old Testament. It's preceded by 1 Samuel, Ruth, you know, all of those books that preceded, like Genesis, Exodus, Lamentation. All of those books come into play in the Old Testament, besides the books of the prophets. So we're in 2 Samuel, and it's preceded by 1 Samuel, and it's followed by First Kings, Second Kings, and all of that. And it reads as thus, beginning with chapter 16, verse 1. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, 
Behold, Zimba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred bunches of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Zimba, What meanest thou by these? And Zimba said, The asses be for the king's household ride on, and the bread and the summer fruit for the young men to eat and the wine that such as it be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Zimba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Zimba, Behold, Thine are all that pertain unto Mephilosheth. And Zimba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when David came to Bahurim, behold, hence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Jerah. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left hand. And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thy man of Belial. The Lord have returned unto thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord have delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Jeriah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life, how much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. In this story, this magnificent story of David and his humility, here it is David has been put to chase. His son Absalom is waging a war against him in attempt to overthrow David and become king of the Israelites. And so Absalom has conspired against his father. And David is now running for his life with some of the members with him of his household and some of his men who are still loyal to him. They're running with him in the wilderness. And here comes Zimba with two asses loaded with bread, wine, and raisins. And he's coming to feed the king and to give refreshments to the king's men and the women who are with them because he loves the king. Now, Zimba is a servant and he's a servant of Mephiloseth. And Mephiloseth is the son of Jonathan. Now, Jonathan loved David. They were good friends. They had a, a bond between them. They even had a league for life, that they would love each other and they would be friends forever. And Jonathan was the son of Saul. Saul has been killed now, Jonathan has been killed, and Mephiloseth is the son of Jonathan. And after the death of Saul and Jonathan, David now is reigning over the people. And David looks around and says, Is there anyone left that I may honor and show mercy to 
that belongs to the family of Saul. And they said, there is one, Mephilaseth, the son of Jonathan. Mephilaseth is lame in both feet. At the age of five, his nurse picks him up, begins to run with him because there are people coming in to come against Saul. And in picking Mephilaseth up and trying to run with him, the boy falls out of her arms and it causes injury to his feet and he becomes lame for life. And so now Mephilaseth is a grown man. His father is dead, his grandfather is dead, and the kingdom is now in the hands of David. And David shows him kindness, and he welcomes him in, and he gives him everything that belonged to Saul, the land that belonged to Saul, the servants that belonged to Saul, everything that belonged to Saul, he gives it to Mephilaseth. And he says to Mephilaseth, you will eat at my table for the rest of your life. And so Mephilaseth is fed at the table of the king for the rest of his life had he desired it. But here is chapter 16. Absalom comes after the father and he's chasing David to kill his own father, take over the throne of Israel. And Mephilaseth is happy and he's in Jerusalem waiting for Absalom to kill his father so that he can be named king over the people. David does not get 